Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. So I hope you're okay. Hindi kayo na-apektuhan mo ni Cardin. So at least it's only Cardin. Kasi kung karto, baka seven years mag-stay yung typhoon. Okay. So we're going to finish our module two and module three today. And as I have messaged you, uh, we have a quiz that's related to today. And the next week, next meeting, we're not able to meet because I have a speaking engagement from 9 to 12, which makes me unavailable. Okay. So in our last discussion, okay, we talk about how the Lewis theory uh, explained the bonds in H2 and F2, and we say it's just a sharing of the electron. And if we're going to look at this, this is just how they look like. Hmm. Then to look at the overlap that they have here, so here, just having what, 1s and 1s, so it's just the overlap of 2, 1s. But here you have what, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, okay? So that's an overlap of uh, 2, 2p orbitals, okay? Now, if we're going to look at uh, the Lewis structure that we have, okay? It doesn't show how the molecules react with one another. So the single one of the hydrogen and the fluorine are same way, but these two have different what bond length and enthalpy. So there's both single bond, but as you could see, this one has shorter uh, bond length compared to this one. And this one has higher enthalpy compared to this one. Okay, so the Lewis structure cannot explain it. So for a more complete explanation, we look for quantum mechanics, okay? So here we could say two theories were developed uh, to describe the covalent bond formation and the electronic uh, structure of the molecules. So one of them is the valence bond theory, okay? Where it assumes that electron uh, in a molecule occupy atoms or atomic orbitals of the individual atoms. So the bonds are formed here by the sharing of electrons from the overlapping atomic orbitals. So as I told you in the hydrogen, there's an overlapping of the 1s orbital of both hydrogen for each hydrogen. And in the fluorine, there's an overlapping of the 2p orbital. And the basis that they have here is the distance between the two, okay? So hydrogen atom would align themselves and according to the length that they have, okay? The one we're in, they are at minimum. That's the distance where they form their single bond. But that's the distance where the electron would share, okay? Now, as you could see it, as they become closer initially, okay? So it's a decrease in the energy there. So uh, let's say there's a repulsion, right? So the energy is going to be down, but at a certain distance, okay? It's going to reach the minima or the minimum energy. And then as it separates, okay? The energy increases again until they're separate from one another. There's already you know, uh, what we call energy between them. So that minimum energy that we have, that's the energy that they have, okay? At minimum where a bond can be formed. And we can look at this in terms of, uh, we could say the electron density. So as the two hydrogens approach each other, okay, their 1s orbitals begin to interact and each electron begin to feel the attraction of the other uh, 
proton. Okay, so remember it's electron, but you, you have also a proton on them. So what happened? So you have this. Okay. So there will come a time that they have this uh, distance where there's an attraction. So gradually the electron uh, density would build up on the region between them, okay, uh, decreases and eventually a stable hydrogen molecule is formed when the distance is around uh, 74 picometer, okay? Now, these uh, two theories that try to, ex that, to explain the electronic structure, it arises because of the need to explain on how the electrons interact with one another. So the valence bond theory uh, shows us like a, a clear picture, a clearer picture of the chemical bond formation than the Lewis theory. Okay, so the BBT would states that a stable molecules forms from meeting atoms or from reacting atoms when the potential energy of the system has decreased to a minimum. So that's the, that's the valence uh, bond theory. Okay, so there's a, a, a the reaction of the atoms when their energy is at minimum. So at minimum, this is what. Okay, it is a stable state. Okay, so if, if you're going to look at this, uh, what we call in valence bond theory, the bonds are localized to the two atoms and not to the molecules. Okay, so for simplicity and convenience, uh, this is usually the reason why uh, BBT in terms of calculation. Now the MOT that we're going to discuss later on, it will be a little bit uh, more complicated compared to this uh, valence bond theory. So uh, uh, as you look at the handout, okay, your, your, your BBT is just a quantum mechanical model that describes the electronic structure of the covalent bond. So it basically answers the question, how uh, does, sharing of electrons occur to form a covalent bond, okay? So if we're going to look at the valence bond theory, the example I could have here is in terms of ammonia. So if you're going to look at ammonia, it's made up of what? Nitrogen and hydrogen. So nitrogen has this electron configuration wherein its 2p orbital has three, okay, unshared electron. Now, if you have a hydrogen, its 1s orbital has one unshared electron. So what happened? Okay, this unshared electron in 1s will be shared with the 3p orbitals they're forming, okay, an overlap. So there's a bond formed from the overlap of the, uh, 2p orbitals of nitrogen with the 1s orbital of which I, uh, what we call hydrogen. And this could also be the basis of your molecular geometry. So if you're going to look at what happened here in terms of the geometry, so how does the p orbital looks like? So it's usually like a peanut, right? So what happened here, imagine when they overlap with an s orbital, which is a sphere. Okay, so if they're going to overlap with one another, so the way that it would form there would be, so this is a 1s, this is a 2s, and this is a 2p. So in this case, if you're going to look at it, so this one would form the overlap. And what do you have here? What's the two dots there? the two S, that is your, what? Unpaired electron. So the, the, the two P orbitals that you have here, they, they paired, okay? With the electron from the one S, that's why you have those what we call spherical shape. So that's how it looks like, okay? So the Aban angle is around 107.3, which is usually lower than 
109.5 that you have in a tetrahedron. So why do you think the bond angle is less? Anyone? Anyone? Oops, did I record for the bit? Okay, yeah. So it's less because you have a lone pair here that exert more repulsion to the orbitals that you have here, okay? Making it lower than 109.5. Uh, so if we're going to look at the, uh, what we call the, the, the valence bond theory, so if you're going to look at here, these are the covalent bonds that form. And the covalent ones that form are what? The uh, overlap of two atomic orbitals, which in this case of 2P overlapping with 3,1S, okay? So each of which contain one electron and the spins of the two electrons are usually what? Opposite as shown here, okay? Now each of the bonded atom would retains its own atomic orbitals but the electron pair in the overlapping orbital is shared by both atoms. So if you're going to look at this, this is how it is. I think I have before that. So if, if, if you have what we call the thing that you see there, so this is how it looks like. But for uh, the NH3, you don't have this one. That's that's a double bond that you have, uh, what we call a lone pair that you have here. So what you have is just this. So that's what it means that each of the bonded atom retains its own atomic orbitals. Okay, that's why I, I, I have told earlier, when you're talking about the valence bond uh, theory, the bonds are localized to two atoms and not molecules. So you can still see the atoms there, the nitrogen and hydrogen, okay? Now, synonymous to this, uh, what we call valence bond theory, is the topic that was covered in uh, module three, okay? So in module three, you have this so-called hybridization, okay? So hybridization is just the mixing of two or more atomic orbitals to form a new set of hybrid orbitals, okay? So this is still under uh, what we call valence bond theory, okay? But what we can uh, say here is if we're going to look at the module, it is more covered in your module three because that's the basis of how, uh, what makes carbon unique, okay? Its ability to form the sp3 hybrid, sp2 hybrid, and sp hybrid. So whenever you do hybridization, you mix at least two non-equivalent atomic orbitals, like what happened to ammonia. You mix an s and a p orbital, okay? Now, when the S and the P orbital mix, they form a new set of orbitals. And it's a hybrid of S and P orbitals. So hybrid orbitals have very different shape from the original atomic orbitals. And the number of hybrid orbitals is equal to the number of the pure atomic orbitals used in the hybridization process, okay? So for the NH3, there would at least be three hybrid orbitals that was formed, okay? That is due to, okay, the P orbital and the S orbital that, that, that happened there. Oh, uh, no, uh, uh, yeah, uh, three P orbitals that was mixed with uh, what we call S orbitals. So each of them is known as the SP3, okay? And from this hybridization, that's where, that's when your covalent bonds are formed. Okay, so they are formed when it, there's an overlap. So they, they are formed when there's an overlap uh, of hybrid orbitals with the atomic orbital. Okay, and the overlap of hybrid orbitals with other hybrid orbitals. So if we're going to look at these hybrid orbitals, so these are the S and the P orbitals. So when you mix them or you hybridize them, so this is the one that you form. So these are the three, uh, what we call SP3 orbitals. So when you say SP3, what does it mean? In the hybridization, 
you have an S orbital, that's one, and three P orbitals, and you mix them together to give you okay, the new uh, mixed orbital or hybrid orbital, which is SP3. So SP3 is different from either the S or the P orbitals. Okay, so if we're going to look at the formation of the SP or uh, SP3 orbital, this is how it looks like. And this is usually the one that we do when we're talking about carbon. Okay. Now, what is the difference of the uh, nitrogen? So in the nitrogen, okay, the p orbitals are utilized. Okay. Uh, uh, but one of them is what we call an unpaired electron. So if we're going to look at the carbon, what happened with the carbon? Okay, so C is equals to what? 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Tama? Tama ba? Class? Hello? Yes, po, sir. Okay, and you have here a hydrogen. So you have 1s2, 2s2. It's just one as one. So if you're going to look at this, you have what? In the 2P, you only have this. Right? Now, what will happen? So what you're going to need to do is the 2P will mix with the 1S and, and, and what it form? You form an sp3, and how much do you have in the sp3? One, two, three, four. Okay. So when you mix, the sp3 orbitals that you have there. So each of them now can accommodate one hydrogen. So the way that you do, okay, so you have the s to s to p. So when they mix, ito yung mag mix ha? not the one s, it's the two s and the two p. So it will give you what? So you know, 1s, maybe I'll do it like this. So you have it like this, right? So what will happen, okay? The 2p and the 2s will mix to give you the sp3 and their energy is between this. Level not to, and how many electrons do they have? Four, right? So they're going to distribute that. So what will happen? Now come your four H, one S orbital. So each of them will occupy that one, having this thing. Okay. Now, in, in terms of the nitrogen, so as you could see, you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Okay, so if the s and the p orbitals would mix, what will happen? So if you form the what we call uh, sp3, so ilagay ko dito ha. So ganito yung ano nila. But the problem is one of them is already filled up. So you only have three unpaired one. So saan ngayon mapupunta to? Itong paired or, uh, uh, orbital that has paired electron already. Anyone? That's your lone pair. Clear? Class? Okay. 
And this one, this is the three hydrogen that you have, okay? And this can also happen with an oxygen. So usually if you have an oxygen, usually you have it like this, right? So Maron Shang took for what we call bonding pair. And if you're going to look at this, it has something to do also. The onsa. So if you hybridize them to give you an sp3, two of them is already paired electrons. So you can only have two electrons to be paired. Okay? Because the thing that we're going to do is, what is the hybridization of nitrogen here? What is the hybridization of oxygen? Okay. So let's say, what's the hybridization of oxygen in water? So that is an sp3. Okay. So what is the hybridization of NN in NH3? So that is also an sp3. Because see, okay. In your hybrid uh, orbitals, you use one S and three P orbitals. Okay. Now, if we have this, this is the hybridization of what? S and P. So if it's a bean, you have one S orbital and one P orbitals. So when you hybridize it, this is what you have. Okay. And usually, it, 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 it's the one that you form okay, in the beryllium chloride. Okay. Now, for the sp2, you have one s orbital and two p orbitals that is hybridized. So if you're going to what we call form the hybridization here, okay. So you have this, and I think a classic example that can assign here is the boron trifluoride. Because if you have boron, a new boron. 1s2, 2s2, 2p what? 1. So if you're going to look at the hybridization of boron, okay, ang pwede lang mag-hybridize yan ay 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Okay. If you're going to look at the, the boron here, So you have this and this, right? So if you hybridize there, what will happen? This is the only one that you can have. You don't have that one. So if you don't have what that one, what does it mean? Condition a hybridize. Okay? SP2 lang yun na hybridize. So in that case, it can only accommodate what? Three unpaired electrons that is on the S. Okay, which in this case is your F. It's a P orbital. Okay, that has one unpaired electron. Ganun din dito sa SP2. So if you have here, so what is beryllium? 1S2, 2S2. 2p none, right? So if you're going to what we call hybridize them, you only form two. Because that's the only number of uh, unpaired electrons that you can, what we call hybridize. One s and one p orbitals. Okay? And if you're going to look at the shape that's formed here, or you want to predict the hybridization, again, the Lewis structure is still part of this. And then you count the number of lone pairs and the number of atoms bonded to the central atom. So based on that, if you have two, okay, so the only hybridization that you have is SP, like your beryllium chloride. So you just have a linear uh, geometry there. Now, if your bonded electrons is three, so that means you need three orbitals here. So one that is made up of S and two P orbitals. So that's a boron fluoride. 
Uh, if you have four bonded pairs or, or lone pairs, the total number there. So you have sp3. Okay. So the classic example that we have is the one that I have shown you. And then if you have five, ano na mangyayari? You're going to add a DO dito. So you have five uh, total of bonding pairs and lone pairs. So you have a PCL5. And then if you have six, okay? So you have two D orbitals there, like in your SF6. So ito yung mga hybridization. So these are just the examples that we have, okay? So the unique thing about the carbon is it can has all SP, SP2, and SP3 hybridization. And that's the topic of your module three. Okay, so for instance, so this is the ground state of your carbon. Okay, so what happened if you hybridize it, it's going to promote one of its electron. Okay, and once it promotes your one of the electron here, what if only three of the hybrid orbitals are what we call participated in covalent bond formation. So one of the P orbitals that remain as what we call P. So in this case, you have what? One orbital that remains unhybridized, okay? So you only have the SP2 as well, one that is hybridized and, and the two P, one of the two P left what, what we call uh, unhybridized. So if you're going to look at the unhybridized here, okay? So that's the gray one. And this is perpendicular to the plane of this what we call hybrid green orbital. So what does this mean? Ano ibig sabihin nito kapag meron kang isang unhybridized na orbital? This could lead to what we call the formation of the so-called pi band. So dito na pumapasok yung sigma sa pi band. So if you have a sigma, this is what? An overlap. So this is a head-on overlap of two atomic orbitals. While pi band, this is a sideways overlap. So based on this, okay? So if you're going to overlap it with the other what we call molecule, so the green one will have an overhead overlap and the gray one, they have this so-called sideways overlap. Okay? So the one that you have there, all these uh, what we call hybridized orbital, they, they usually form a sigma bond, okay? And if you have an unhybridized orbital, you form the so-called pi bond, okay? Now, in, in, in other thing, ano ibig sabihin nito? If you have this what we call molecule, It means you have a double bond. Remember this? So what's the difference in terms of hybridization of carbon in methane compared to the one in ethylene? Anyone? So this one, it has an sp3 hybridization, and this one has an sp2 hybridization. Gets? Class, pwede magtanong. Kung hindi kayo nakakaintindi, pwede kayo magtanong. Now, you may ask yourself, how do we know if it's sp3? How do we know with sp2? So if you're going to look at this, how many bonds do you have on here? 
both the bonding pair and the non-bonding non pair. So you have one, two, three, four. So you have to have a hybridization that will give you four orbitals, which is sp3. Now here, how many bonding pairs do you have? One, two, three. One, two, three. So you need only a hybridization that gives you three orbitals. Kasi yung double bond is one bonding pair. Now I can ask you how many sigma bond do you have and how many pi bond do you have at least for CH4? Anyone? So for every single bond that you, for any bonding that you have, it always have one sigma. So you have here one, two, three, four. So you have four sigma bond. Since it doesn't have a double bond, you don't have any pi bond. Now here, how many sigma bond do you have? Overall. Hello. Four. Four. Okay. Five. Four. So if you're going to look at this, for every bonding pair, there's always a sigma. So one, two, three, four, five. So you have a five sigma bond there. And how many pi bonds? One, four. Okay. For every double bond, you have one, five. Okay. So as of now, you should be able to predict the hybridization. So if it's sp3 so that means you have at least four bonding or non-bonding pair okay if it's sp2 that means you have three in terms of this one okay yung isang hydrogen lang so as you could see there for this hydrogen there's one two three bonding pairs okay so if you're going to look at this you have a sigma and a pi bond now the question is, which is stronger? A double bond or a single bond? Plus, may tanong ako, which is stronger? A, a, a double bond or a single bond? Double bond. A double bond. Why? Ano yung pagkakaiba ng double bond doon sa single bond? A single bond would only have what? A sigma, right? Okay. Now, a double bond, in addition to the sigma, it also has a pi bond. So the extra pi bond that you have there, that makes it stronger. Okay. So if you're going to look at the sigma bond S, so let's say you shake your hand. You try to break it. Okay. Mahirap, di ba? Now, the pi bond that you have there, paano may illustrate yung pi bond? Re remember, the sigma bond overlaps. So maybe shaking of n is the right way to compute. Now, how about this? How do you look at this? P as in uh, pi as in P. S for shake. So P as in what? You see this? What is this? Raise. Okay, so it just gives you additional uh, strength in addition to the sigma bond. Now, how about the other one? So, what if we have an sp? So, in an sp, you only hybridize two orbitals, one s and one p. So, that means how many pi bond do you have if you have an sp? Anyone? Ilan yung S, uh, pi bond na meron tayo sa SP? So usually, yung isang P, isang pi, yung isa pang P, that's another pi. So in an SP orbital, you have a sigma, sigma bond and two pi bond. And the classic example that we have here is this. So ano yung SP? Pag tinignan nyo. That's the one that has a triple bond. And if you're going to look at the triple bond, so ito yung overlap na meron ka and then meron kang ganyan. 
So that's one of the P orbital. Tapos meron pa yung sa side na to. So that's another pi orbital. And with that, it's so strong. It's the strongest among the four uh, bonds that you have. So if you're going to look at the view, this is how it looks like. Okay. So if you're going to ask here, to so ask to describe the bonding of CH4, what can you say? Ano hybridization ng C? Ano yung hybridization ng O? Can you answer that? C is what? SP, SP what? SP, SP2, SP3. Anyone? Okay. So, kung hindi niyo pa nakukuha, you count. One bonding pair, another bonding pair, and another bonding pair. So, overall, you have three. Now, for the oxygen, one bonding pair, another non-bonding pair, another one non-bonding pair. So we have three. So both of them are sp2. Claro? So you have three bonded atoms there. Here alone pair, so that means an sp2. Okay. Now how many sigma bond and pi bond do you have? Anyone? Tatlo po na sigma, tas dalawa po na pi. Is it dalawa ba yung pi? How many pi? Isa lang po. Pala. One pi lang po. That's only one because you only have a double bond. Okay? So, the thing that you need to remember, kapag mayroon kang single bond, you have one sigma bond. So, meron kang double bond, may, may isa kang sigma, may isa kang pi. Just think of it, okay, the, the total number of one here depends on the total of sigma and pi bond that you have. So, isang sigma, isang pi, so that means double. So, pag triple, isang sigma, dalawang pi. So, sagutin natin to. So how many sigma and pi bonds are in a given figure? Yes, seven that's sigma po, at isa pong seven sigma. Seven sigma po, that's isa pong pi. Isang pi. Okay, so I said it, one, two, three, four, five, six sa mga single bond, and then may isa pang one doon sa double bond, tapos isang five. Okay? So, question. Tutunan niyo ba to? Now, the next one, I think this is just the same material as I have in my uh, uh, recorded lecture. Now, yung BPT, it cannot satisfactorily account yung magnetic property of some molecules. One instance of them is the oxygen. Okay? Now, if, we, if we're going to look at the oxygen, it has no unpaired electron, but it is paramagnetic. Okay? Because uh, in our previous chapter, I think when you have an unpaired electron, it is paramagnetic. If you have an, uh, no unpaired electron, it is diamagnetic. But if you're going to look at the oxygen, it has no unpaired electron, and it is paramagnetic. So the BBT cannot satisfactorily uh, describe or account for this property. So all electrons are paired, and oxygen should be diamagnetic. However, okay, they found out based on the experiment that it is paramagnetic. So a new model has to be set. Okay, 
So this is what we call the molecular orbital theory. And here the bonds are formed from the interaction of atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals. So if we're going to look at the uh, atomic, uh, the molecular orbitals or MOT, we could say this is just a mixing of what? Atomic orbitals plus atomic orbitals to form molecular orbital. Okay? So if you're going to look at this, the atomic orbital is associated with only what? One atom. So the way that you're going to look at this in the formation of the molecular orbital. So if you mix the atomic orbitals, you form a bonding and an anti-bonding molecular orbital. So as you can see, the one has lower energy and one has higher energy with respect to the atomic orbitals. Okay, so in the for in the four molecular orbitals, that's where you put the electrons that would come from the atomic orbitals. Okay. So in terms of the sigma 1s, it's a constructive interference. So this is your bonding sigma. Okay. Now, a bonding molecular orbital, it has lower energy and more stable than the atomic orbital from which it formed, as you can see, it's lower in energy. Now, the other one, that's what we call the destructive interference, it formed the antibonding sigma molecular orbital. It has higher energy, okay, and more unstable than the atomic orbitals from which it was formed. Okay, so what happened? If you're going to look at the destructive one, when you sum up the two waves, you don't see anything. But if it's a constructive, when you sum it up, it just has an, an increase okay, in the uh, frequency or what we call intensity of the wave that you added together. So these two interaction that you have there, that's form the basis of this what we call molecular orbital. <laughs> So for instance, if you have hydrogen, so what does it mean? It's a combination of the atomic orbital of one hydrogen here and one hydrogen here, but this is already P. So I, I, I want to look at the one that's S. S but this one as well. So kapag mayroon ang hydrogen, so if you have one here and one here, so what will happen? Okay. So you can you can determine the number of bond that forms here because the number of bond or the bond order is just equals to the number of electrons in the bonding orbital minus the number of electrons in anti-bonding orbitals. So in this case, this is what? Two minus zero, okay, equals two. And you get the one half of that. What is one half of two? One, so you form a single bond. So if you're going to go in here, so this is the basis of this uh, molecular orbital. Now, if you have the T orbitals already, okay, so you form three bonding orbitals and three anti-bonding orbitals, and this is how the sequence is. And the rule that you have is just fill up the orbitals here in increasing energy based on the number of electrons that you have in the atom. So if we're going to look at this here, the number of molecular orbitals uh, is formed always equals to the number of the atomic orbitals that's combined. So if you have one S orbital, you combine them, so you have two molecular orbitals, one bonding and one antibonding. If you have three p orbitals, so you have three uh, bonding or orbitals and three anti-bonding orbitals. So the more stable the bonding molecular orbital, the less stable the corresponding anti-bonding molecular orbital. And the feeling of molecular orbitals are from low to high energy. And each of the molecular orbital can accommodate up to two electrons. So you still apply the Hund's rule when adding electrons to molecular orbitals of the same energy. That is, you split them or you uh, 
uh, share them, divide them. Okay? And the number of electrons in the molecular orbitals is equal to the sum of all electrons in the bonding atoms. So to determine the bond order, so whatever the number of electrons on the MO, bonding MO minus the number of electrons in anti-bonding MO times one half. So let's see. Here. So H2 plus, so what does it mean? So if you have H here, you have H here. So H2 plus, you only have one electron. So if you have that, so it is what? One minus zero will give you one times one half. So that is your bond order. So the hydrogen that we did earlier, and then the He2 plus, and then the He2. Okay. So you see, you have here what? Two minus two, that will give you zero. So one half minus zero will give you zero. So what's the consequence of this? When you have a bond order of zero, what does it mean? Anyone? Hello. Hello. If your bond order is equal to zero, what does it mean? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. You know, if it's a being known. So that molecule don't exist, okay? And as you could see, there's no such thing as HE2, okay? Now, if we're going to, to, to go on this one, let's try to go with the higher molecule and try to look here on what we call the oxygen. Kasi si oxygen talaga yung dahilan, kaya siya nagkaganun eh. So what can you say about the oxygen? Have you seen the oxygen? Look. So you could see here, it is now unpaired, okay? So if you're going to look at how do they get this, or let's say this, this, this thing, nitrogen. Bakit triple bond yung nitrogen, okay? So if you're going to look this, so this is canceled out. So the one that you're going to look at, you have here what, six, and here you have zero. So six minus zero will give you six and one half of six is three. So the same thing here. So I can cancel this out. So I have here what? Six minus two. So I get four times one half of that. So I have one order two that is equal to double one. Clear? Clear? Yes? Uy! <laughs> Sabugat naman kayo. Medyo po. Okay, so if we're going to look at the oxygen, okay, so Either you you, 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 you you sum up this and then you subtract it with this one. Or since I see there are what here? They're just the same, right? So I can just cancel them out. And the one that I'm going to look at is just this. The bonding orbital and uh, subtract it with the anti-bonding orbitals. Okay? So here, 
So you, you see, you have two. And you don't have anything here. So that's zero. So that's equals to two. And you multiply it one half. What do you get? One. Now here, you see that the same here, when you cancel out lang to. So you have here four. Okay, you have nothing. Zero. So four minus zero is four. You get one half. That's equals to two. The same thing here. I can just cancel this out. Or kung gusto niyo isama yan, plus 2 lang doon. So it will be 8 minus 2, which is still equals to 6. Kaya? The quiz of this type is next Wednesday. The one that we have today is just a true or false. It's just a 5 minutes, 5 question true or false. So parang yung quiz sa Wednesday, sa, sa, sa Thursday is more on chapter quiz. This is more on module two. Yung module three kasi is more on hybridization. Okay. So question, because this ends your chapter two. Ano? <coughs> May tanong ba? Before we go with the some short organic chemistry. Tanong. So if we start in true or false, tapos na. But baka sinabi kang tapos na, hindi na kayo makikinig ngayon dito. Clear na po, sir. Okay na po. So the next thing that we have is the functional group. So before we go with the functional group, so in organic chemistry is just what? Chem of carbon compound lang ba yan? Is if you're going to look at the objective of uh, module four, we already did the first one, which is the chemical bonding and hybridization in carbon using BPT. So the one that I'm doing now is just a short functional group thing, okay? Because you just need to read uh, the, 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 the material that you have there. So organic chemistry, they said is chem of carbon compound, but this is not true because CO2 is what? What can you say about CO2? Organic ba yan? Is CO2 an organic compound? Hindi po. No. Okay, so that's why you cannot say organic compound is a chemistry of uh, what we call carbon compound. So usually, they said, in some book, they said it's a chemistry of carbon containing uh, compound that includes hydrogen and oxygen. So may, pwedeng may hydrogen, or pwedeng may hydrogen at oxygen. Okay, so if you're going to look at the organic chemistry, it's one pill, you're going to take it, I think, is it 40, 43, 44, uh, depending on the uh, major new. Okay, so the, the one that we're going to talk about here is the so-called functional group. Now, when you're talking about functional groups, so these are specialized groups or families that gives the property to a certain organic compound. Okay, and these are the different functional group. So, hindi nyo pa siya i-memorize ngayon, but when you go to orbit, that's what you have. So, you have the alkane, okay? It's a single bond carbon hydrogen 
you have the alkene, so that's a double uh, carbon double double, uh, double bond with carbon. And you have alkyne, you have a carbon carbon triple bond. Now you have the aromatic ring. This is the ring. And you have the so-called halo hey, uh, alkane, or in South they call it the alkyl halide. So the X there is any of this what we call halogen. That's why it's called halo. Now alcohol is the one that has an OH. An ether is an oxygen between two carbon. Okay. Uh, I will discuss uh, one, them one by one and some materials that is associated with this functional group. And then you have the amine, okay? And amine can be a primary, a secondary, or a tertiary. Ganun din sa alcohol. It can be a primary, okay? A uh, secondary or tertiary. So it depends kung saan naka-attach yung OH. Okay? And then you have the aldehyde that we have here, the ketone, Okay, uh, the carboxylic acid, the ester, the amide, and the uh, what we call nitrile. So these are the common functional group. Okay, so if we're going to go on them one by one, okay, so an alkane usually that's the one that has. The sp3 hybridization. Okay. And most of these alkane are the, the smelly one. Are you familiar with propane, butane, sanyan? Alam nyo to? Gasul? Okay. Methane. So those are the alkane. Okay. Now for the alkene, usually the one that you have here is the et ethylene. Okay, or the propene or propylene that, that you usually do. Now, among the one that, that happen uh, naturally is your pinene, okay, which is a turpentine. And then we can have a pheromone that has a double bond. So whenever you have a double bond, that mm -hmm. is an alkene. Okay? Now, your triple bond naman, meron tayong tinatawag na alkynes. And some of the famous alkynes is the capillin, okay, the ductilin. So yung capillin, yan yung antifungal agent uh, found naturally. Ductilin is a marine natural product. And this one, uh, yung pag nagtate kayo ng contraceptives, yun yung ethinyl estradiol. So meron kayong triple bond. Okay. Na Alkyne yan. So these are, we could say, the so-called hydrocarbons. So pagkakaiba lang nila, single bond, double bond, and triple bond of the carbons. So this is the alkane, the alkene, and the alkyne. Okay? Now the benzene is represented by a ring, like this one. Okay? So it's a resonance structure like this from Augusto Kekule or in representation na ano nila na hybrid, ganito. Now usually, another thing that they call this is the so-called aromatic ring. Why do you think it's aromatic ring? Anyone? The word aroma. Okay. So usually, if you have the benzene, it's an aromatic ring. So there, there, there's what we call an aroma associated to it. I don't know if you have smelled toluene. You know toluene? Ano yung nilalagay sa sapatos, pandikit? Na gustong gusto natin, na naka-high? Rugby, sir, parang ganun. <laughs> Rugby? <laughs> the AI of that is toluene. So one that got some of the one, as long as you see a ring there, that is, a, we could say, a benzene or the so-called aromatic compound. So you have, this is ibuprofen, okay? uh, penicillin, morphine, 
lysergic acid and then yung nilalagay sa pimples as uh, hindi pala aspirin sa lisilic ay nilalagay sa pimples this is aspirin the ai of aspirin okay now yung alkyl halides naman ito lang yung merong tinatawag nating halogen so f cl br i So you can have a primary, secondary, and a tertiary alkyl halide. So depende kung saan nakakonect yan. So kapag yung halide nakakonect sa carbon, na nakakonect sa dalawang hydrogen, that's a primary. Kapag yung isang hydrogen naging R, okay, like this one, or another carbon, so that's a secondary. Kapag lahat sila carbon, that's a tertiary. Alcohol. So they said if you got stranded in an island and if you have one functional group that can be used to produce other functional group, it should be an alcohol. Hindi lang pampalimot na problema. Okay? You can synthesize the other uh, functional group from this functional group. Okay? So an alcohol can also be a primary, a secondary, or a tertiary. So, depende kung nasaan naka-attach yung OH doon sa C. So, kapag H pa rin yung dalawang kaano niya, so you could say that's a primary. So, kapag naging C to, that's a secondary. Kapag C to, that's what we call the tertiary. So, let's say this one. Oh, we just say it like that. So, this is a primary. Now, kapag ganito, that's secondary. Now, kapag ganito na, so that's tertiary. Okay? So some alcohol, the, everyone's favorite, the ethanol, you have ad, ad, uh, adrenaline, pseudepedrine, uh, glycerol, and cholesterol. Okay? So you can find also alcohol in morphine. So in morphine, you can have alkane, You can have an amide here. You can have alcohol. You can have ether here. You can have the aromatic ring. And dami yung functional group. Okay? So in the designer drugs, you can also find some of the alcohol. The codeine, the heroin, the oxycodone, or not that one. Ako ni alcohol dito. So when they usually what we call is still released, ito magiging OH, and then the morphine. Now yung ethers, yan yung merong R o R. So R is a C. Okay? So the functional group that you have, the uh, usually example, we have the dimethyl ether, uh, the ethylene oxide, and the tetrahydrofuran. Now, the amines, that's the one that contains nitrogen. Okay, and the amines are usually uh, uh, no, smelly. Okay, uh, example of your what we call amines are the waste products that come out of your body. Bakit sila may amoy? Because of the amine. Okay, so it can be a primary when your nitrogen is attached to only one carbon or alkyl group. If it's two, that's secondary. If it's three, that's tertiary. Okay? And then you have the aldehydes and the ketones. So anong pagkakaiba ng aldehydes sa ketones? Aldehydes, only one is carbon and the other one is hydrogen. Okay? But the ketones, both of them are carbon. And usually, you have a carbonyl group there. You have an sp2 carbon. An example that you have here is the testosterone and androstenedione. So this is a ketone that you can see here. A ketone that you can see here. Tapos ito pa. Okay. Now, the other one is the so-called carboxylic group or carboxylic acid, ester and amide. So usually ito yun. So remember, If this is H, 
that's aldehyde. If this is another uh, that's ketone, but if you're going to replace it, let's say with this one, you have the carboxylic acid. But if you make it an ROR, you have the ester. Okay, and if you make it into NH uh, two, you have the amide or NH R or N NR two. Okay. So, yan yung mga tinatawag na carbol, carbonyl group. So, if we're going to look at the example here, the analgesic is an example of acetyl salicylic acid. That's an example of a carboxylic group. The ibuprofen, that is also an example of a carboxylic group. The acetic acid, that is also, if we're going to look at the acetic acid, this is how it is. CH3COOH, right? Now, if you have this fat and fatty acids, usually they also have a carboxylic group, like the palmitic acid, which is a fatty acid. Okay? Now, lysergic acid, this one, that is also a uh, carboxylic group. And then the other that we have here, if I'm not mistaken, this one, okay, the aspartame. So this is what? This is an example of an ester. Okay. This one also here. If you're going to what we call, no, this is not the one. I think the one that we have here Oh, dapat wala to. Wala yung ano dito, functional group. Okay? So, ester are what we call the good smell. The one that associated with uh, flavors. Okay? Yun yung mga ester. Alam yung amoy ng vanilla? Or yung banana? Yes, are, sir. Are you still there? So, those are ester. Yes, sir. Okay? Now, yung amide, okay, ito yung merong mga nitrogen na naka-attach dyan sa carboxylic group. So, yung acetal, acetamide, okay? Uh, yung nitrous naman, ito yung messy so double bond N, uh, triple bond N. So, yan lang yung tinatawag nating different functional group. So, if you're given here, you should be able to tell what functional group is this. Ano tong functional group na to? Ito dito. What is that? Ano tong functional group na to? Ano tong functional group? This one. This one. This one. So ano to? Ano rin ito? So this is? Anyone? There's an ester. And this is an alcohol. This is an ether. This is a carboxylic group. This is an amide. And this is what? An aromatic ring. And this is what? An alkene and so on. So yan yung uh, different functional group. So question. Tanong. May tanong? Nan naman po, sir. Yung iba, may tanong? So true or false lang yung question nyo. Sa next quiz, sir, ilang items naman po? Uh, hindi ko lang alam, pero it's more than 10. Hindi ko pa siya tapos eh. Pero we will not meet, so you're going to have that one, an assignment like 
similar to the last slide wherein I showed you what are the functional groups. So ito, five minutes lang ang ibibigay sa inyo. Okay? So it's a true or false question lang. So I'll set the due at what? 11.30? Job 30, sir. Uh, masyadong mahaba na. <laughs> 12, sir. Yeah, I'll give you until 12. Sige po. Thank you po. So, uh, before we said goodbye, I, I want you to see if it's already what we call publish, hindi ko paano pa publish yo. So it will be published now. So Sir, question? Yes? Ano nga po ulit? Module 2 po yung i-quiz sa Thursday po. Oo. Oh, Buong module 2. Yep. Okay po. Thank you po. I just want to check before I give you the go signal. Lalabas na true or false. Okay, true or false naman. Baka mamaya may mga missing nga naman na ano eh. Okay. So I think that's it. So we're not going to see each other on uh, Thursday, but you have a quiz and assignment that you need to uh, fill up. Okay? So yung quiz nyo is on th Thursday when we're not going to meet. So if you, have, if you have no 